Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to Wired Network Standards. Today I'm going to be discussing the TIA EIA 568A and TIA EIA 568B standards, then I'm going to move on to Ethernet standards, and I'm going to conclude with some other standards. I have a whole lot of information to cover, but not a whole lot of time, so let's dive into today's session. Of course, I'm going to begin with the TIA EIA 568A and 568B wired standards. The TIA EIA 568A and 568B standards deal with twisted pair wires. These are the two cable pinout standards that are regulated by the TIA EIA. That's the Telecommunications Industry Association Electronic Industries Alliance. The pinout standards specify the ordering of the wires to ensure that proper networking communication can take place. The T568A standard is white green green, white orange blue, white blue orange, white brown brown. On the other hand, the T568B standard is white orange orange, white green blue, white blue green, white brown brown. All modern Ethernet networks that utilize unshielded twisted pair, UTP, or shielded twisted pair, STP, should use the TIA EIA standards. As a quick refresher for twisted pair wiring, here are some common tools that you will need. There are wire strippers. These are used to remove the insulating jacket from the cable. Then there are crimping tools. These are used to secure the wires into modular connectors. Then there are punch down tools. These are used to secure wires into punch down blocks. And finally, there are cable testers. These are used to test the integrity of the network cables that you've just created. With that covered, let's move on to Ethernet standards. First up are distance limitations. Twisted pair copper wire is limited to 100 meters without a repeater unless otherwise stated. Coaxial LAN cabling is limited to either 185 or 500 meters depending upon the coaxial cable that is used. As an example, a 10 base 2 coaxial network uses RG58 and is limited to 185 meters in length. On the other hand, a 10 base 5 coaxial network using RG8 is limited to 500 meters. With fiber optics, LAN transmission is limited by the cable type that is used. The current maximum is over 40 kilometers over a single mode optical fiber or SMF fiber. Now let's talk about twisted pair cable standards. There's 10 base T, that's 10 megabits per second using UTP over a minimum of CAT3 cable. Then there's 100 base T, that's 100 megabits per second using a minimum of CAT5. You can also have 100 base TX. This is 100 megabits per second networking using two pair over a minimum of CAT5. Then there's 1000 base TX. This is one gigabits per second networking using two pair over a minimum of CAT5E cable. Then there's 10G base T, that is 10 gigabits per second networking using a minimum of CAT6, but it's only good for 40 meters. Finally, there's also 10 G base T, that's 10 gigabits per second networking, using a minimum of CAT 6A cabling, but that's good for up to 100 meters. Now let's move on to the multi-cable standard, and that's 1000 base X. Under this standard, there's 1000 base SX, which is one gigabit per second networking over a short distance multi-mode fiber and it's usually less than two kilometers. Then there's 1000 base LX. This is one gigabits per second networking over long distance single mode fiber, and it's usually a greater span than two kilometers. And finally, there's 1000 CX. This is one gigabits per second networking over a coaxial cable that can be up to 25 meters long. Now let's talk about 10 gigabit networking. 
First up, there's 10 G-Base SR over multi-mode fiber, and it's good for up to 300 meters. Then there's 10 G-Base LR over single-mode fiber, which is good for up to 10 kilometers. Then we have 10 G-Base ER, which is over single-mode fiber, and it's good for up to 40 kilometers. Then we have 10 G-Base SW. This runs over MMF, and it's good for up to 300 meters, and it's used on a wide area network. Then there's 10 G base LW, which runs over SMF up to 10 kilometers, and it's also used in a wide area network. And then there's 10 G base EW, which runs over single mode fiber for up to 40 kilometers, and again on that Sonnet type WAN network. Then there's 10 G base LX4, which runs over single mode fiber, and it's good for up to 300 meters. Then there is 10 G base LX4 over multi mode, which is over multi mode fiber, which is good for up to 10 kilometers. And finally, there is 10 G base CX4. This runs over infinity band copper cabling, and it's good for up to 15 meters. It's time to conclude with some other standards. First up is DOCSIS, or Data Over Cable Services Interface Specification. These are the standards that have been established to provide the interface requirements for data transmissions over a broadband cable network. To achieve the best performance when using broadband cable, the cable modem should meet the highest DOCSIS standard used by the cable provider. The most current DOCSIS standard is 3.1 which allows for up to a theoretical maximum download speed of 10 gigabits per second with a theoretical upload speed of 1 gigabit per second. Then there's the IEEE 1905.1-2013 standard. This is a standard that defines a network enabler or device that is used to create a convergent home networking environment that includes different types of wired and wireless networks. The standard also includes Ethernet over power line, which is using the existing electrical wiring in a structure as the media to transport data. The standard also includes Ethernet over HDMI, which is using an HDMI interface and cable to transport network traffic. Now that concludes this session on the introduction to wired network standards. I began by talking about the TIA, EIA, 568A, and 568B standards. Then I moved on to the Ethernet standards, and I concluded with a brief discussion on some other standards. On behalf of PACE IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.